In 1924, the physicist Louis de Broglie proposed that matter has a wave nature, that, that every particle in the universe also has a wave-like nature. And it was that insight that triggered uh, the second quantum revolution, the fact that uh, it led to Schrodinger equation and matrix mechanics and, and what we consider to be modern day quantum mechanics. And so it was a revolutionary insight. But from the beginning, people debated what is a wave of matter? What does it mean for matter to have a wave-like component? People like Schrodinger believed that matter at a subatomic level was literally smeared out over space, and that turned out to not line up with experiments. The Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics says that the wave nature of particles isn't really real in the sense that the particles are real, but are a mathematical tool that allows us to calculate the probabilities of where matter might appear in some quantum mechanics experiment, but it doesn't have its own independent existence. De Broglie himself all offered a third possibility. He said that perhaps Particles do exist, as we think of as particles existing, and that waves exist as well. And these waves play a very important role. That when we perform some quantum mechanic experiment, or just literally any quantum mechanical particle does a quantum mechanical thing, the particle moves around, but the wave moves around too. And this wave propagates, it moves, it evolves according to the Schrodinger equation. It just it does, it exists and it does its thing. And then the wave tells the particle where to go. So the wave is real, the wave evolves, the wave physically exists. So when we think of this wave-particle duality of nature in this de Broglie's approach to what we call pilot wave theory, the wave exists and the wave tells the particle where to go. Now, de Broglie presented this idea. He ended up abandoning it, abandoning it and becoming a champion of the Copenhagen interpretation. And this idea was later picked up decades, decades later by David Bohm. And so another name for the, this theory is Bohmian mechanics or de Broglie-Bohm theory or pilot wave theory. Now, one of the biggest advantages of pilot wave theory is that it makes quantum mechanics fully deterministic. You know, one of the problems with quantum mechanics or the standard interpretation of quantum mechanics is that it looks non-deterministic, that results just randomly happen, that if you shoot a particle at a screen, you don't know where it's gonna land. You can describe where it might land and the probabilities of it landing in one place or another, but you can't say exactly where it will land. And this non-determinism, it, it's rough. It, it's hard to wrap our heads around because literally everything else in the universe operates deterministically. So why should subatomic particles behave any differently? Pilot wave theory rescues that because it says, no, 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 no. The wave, the pilot wave guiding these particles operates deterministically. It operates according to the Schrodinger equation and it's telling the particles where to go and everything is deterministic at every single level, and physics is rescued, but in order to get the probabilities that we know and love from quantum mechanics, the true positions of the particles are hidden from this, from us. It's a different way of looking at the same problem. In the Copenhagen interpretation, the standard interpretation of quantum mechanics, reality at the subatomic level really is non-deterministic. You really, nobody knows, not even the particle knows where it's going to end up. In the pilot wave interpretation of quantum mechanics, the particle does know where it's gonna go because the wave is propagating and the wave is telling through a special equation called the guiding equation where the particle is gonna go, but it masks that information from us. We simply don't have access to it. If we had some godlike ability, some super microscope that could divine the secrets of the subatomic world, we would be able to see the particle wiggling around in its trajectory to reach uh, the screen or the detector, but we don't. We don't have that ability. We don't have that access, 
And so it appears to us to be random even though it actually isn't. This is the only way to make a deterministic theory give probabilities in randomness is if the true determination, if the true uh, trajectory of the particles is hidden from us. So again, in Copenhagen interpretation, reality itself at the subatomic level is non-deterministic. It is random. It is prob probabilistic. In the pilot wave interpretation, reality at the deepest level is deterministic. It does follow a set of rules, just like every other theory of physics, but the true information, the location of the particles, is hidden from us and we simply can't access it through our measurements. And so that's a big attraction to the pilot wave theory is it removes the non-determinism of quantum mechanics and allow, gives us an explanation for finding apparent randomness and probability in our measurements from a completely deterministic universe. But just like Copenhagen interpretation, just like the many worlds interpretation, there are some shortcomings and some flaws in this interpretation, which I will discuss next time. Please like, share, and subscribe, and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to keep supporting this show.